This week on our SBNB Update, Kandarin gets a fresh coat of paint and we revisit our favorite areas exuding nostalgia. From the Arendar Pass to Ardoyan Zoo and West Ardoyan, we cover what's new while also visiting Piscatoris, Barbarian Outpost, and the Legends Guild. This is RSPNB Update, episode 969, recorded Thursday, January 18th, 2024. Don't let the snakes out. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of RSBNB Update. This week, Kandarin Graphical Update Week, Tannis. Good to have you aboard as usual. Thank you, Shane. Yeah, I uh, had had to be here to talk about such a iconic place and uh, nice little paint job it got. Right? Oh yeah, and it, and it felt like more than it than a paint job in in some cases in terms of the memories it evokes. But also, uh, joining us to talk about Kandarin's graphical rework is uh, Zant. Welcome. Hello. Who, of course, uh, many areas in Kandarin have a, have a special place in your heart, right? Which I'm sure we'll get to as we uh, as we go deeper down that path. Oh yes. Also, Earth is uh, here for his first appearance of 2024 on the podcast, and um, I figured it'd be good to bring you on uh, this week because in the past you've uh, you've said that these graphical updates need to. Um, evoke Not the enrage me well yeah and also just evoke the feelings of making it still feel runescape but just carrying it, it forward to the modern era and you were you were actually pleased with this graphical update so we, we thought it'd be a good idea to have, was. You, have you on uh the podcast as well um but of course uh for for folks uh, joining us for the first time you can find show notes at update dot show but before we get too far down the track i just want to uh, give a, give a brief mention to something that you might have heard in the show open, just a bit bit of an explanation about it. Um, as we as we embark on into what is probably going to be one of the most uncharted years of RuneScape uh, for 2024, we want to know what you're thinking right now about the podcast and RuneScape in general. So with that, we're doing one of our world famous surveys, and we want to hear about how you play RuneScape, your thoughts on the podcast, and most importantly where the podcast should go next. And you can help us right now by taking a quick pause of this week's episode by visiting update.show slash survey and filling out the survey. And of course, your insights on this will help us chart the course for the next year. Or as we, as I said, as we embark on onto those uncharted waters. And of course, to uh, express how thankful we are to our listeners for this. We're also hosting a survey raffle with this where three participants who complete the survey will win a bond at the end of it. And once again, you can find the survey at update.show slash survey. And uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys have to say about that. So I just wanted to kind of get that out of the way uh, before we start talking about the graphical rework. But I also have to thank our experienced tier Patreon supporters for whom which RSB and update would not be possible in this week. That's Amos Reed, Andrew C, Drama Free, Jason S, Jesse W, Keski, Ricky A, Ripith, Runestar, and the Naked Captain. Of course, uh, big huge thank you goes out to them, and you'll learn more about our Patreon offerings a little bit later in the podcast. All right, all right. Um, I'm in game at Shane12088. Zant is at iZant. Earth can be found at Lord Earth, and Tannis is at Tannis79. All right. I think already I mentioned we have show notes at update.show as well. But all right. Candoring graphical graphical rework. What kind of warm fuzzies we got from this? What what area what area first jumped out at you guys? Let's just start let's just start going going around here. Uh let's start with you, uh, Zan. Which one first jumped out at you? Okay, well the R and R mountains, obviously. The scale of that is quite amazing. Because they're actually mountains now, right? Yeah, but I gotta say, seriously, uh, Ardoin Market, like, the amount of color there now, it just looks so much more lively and just so much more in line with what I think a market like that should look like. Like, I seriously thought it was, like, mm. a very bleak-looking place before, which is maybe, maybe I guess, a bit what Ardoin is supposed to be, but... And they didn't just... completely change the layout of it, too. Yeah. 
but yeah, it's just it, it's got a nice visual pop to it now, and I, I just love it. It doesn't look flat like it yeah, used to. Yeah, and, and, and that's exactly how I would have described it before. I feel like since RSHD, <laughs> our doing has just been flat with, yeah. you know, the run-of-the-mill textures. And I, I I feel like Ardoin and Camelot, Sears Village and whatnot, always come up in terms of people's heads of what they'd like to see, you know, like a true graphical rework of, like reimagine the buildings, reimagine, you know, the layout of these cities. But I think as we've illustrated time and time again with these updates, Entrena, now this one, this gets us 95% of the way there, I think, on that. And... I actually do want to talk about how you mentioned, you know, the the colors on that. And if you go to their um, uh, AB photos that they put up, you can just see in the Ardoyan one about how it was just pre-gen textures before. And then if you flip on over to where we're at now, it just breathes a whole new amount of life into it. And I don't know... I don't know if that's due to just lighting and the way, you know, the light bounces off the textures. Because they did add, you know, a few stalls in the middle of the market and they changed the way the the banners go across it. But I think it's the colored tops of the stalls, too, that really helps. Okay, Mm -hmm. right. And then the light would bounce off of that. And then that just kind of um, adds on to it, I guess you could say. Okay, fair enough. Um, also, did anybody notice that at the first stall, there's actually a fur on the ground that that that's actually high fidelity now? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, a big bear, a big bear. Oh, there's I see another that. one that's at awesome. the um, Poison Arrow Pub, I think it's called. Okay, I missed that one. I missed. Yeah, that there's one. a full bear skin there. <laughs> Nice. I love all the new little foliage bits around here, like the flowers and like the updated bushes. They look really great. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. Somebody had a fun time creating flowers and whatnot and then just, you know, went and added these um, at, at appropriate locations throughout the entire world. So that's a good one. Uh, how about you? I will say Go ahead. Uh, one thing about Ardoin I think is a little bit weird. I, I don't know about these little dinky wooden zoo enclosures. I'm just saying, man, I don't think that's <laughs> holding out that wolf or these bears or like, I, I wouldn't want to be in that zoo and uh, enraging one of those bears or wolves or something. Okay. Okay. Maybe, it looks all right, though. Maybe they're, maybe they're meant that they should just be talked to there because isn't that what people do? They go talk to animals at the zoo in a way that they can't in, in real life. I mean, not a grizzly bear. Crazy people might. What kind uh, of people? The animals? Yeah, yeah, but this looks like the grizzly bear could just like put his paws up on the like side of the uh, yeah, fence they, and just they, they crawl they cut, over. Right, and then just kind of hop that over. sounds like an opportunity to me. <laughs> that sounds like uh, Tiger King right there. Oh, God, I forgot about that saga. <laughs> Ow. Uh, Tannis, what you know about... what's funny though? Like, yeah, go ahead. The zoo. Speaking of the zoo, so I have a couple of these. Um, I actually thought the zoo was the best, like the best looking place. Oh, it looks great. Like, yeah, yeah. I was like, I was like, I, I, like, I don't know. I just, I really, I don't know. That was just what I thought um, was kind of my pick for you know what was like the coolest. Um, but nostalgia wise, I went. There was one place I wanted to check out. Um, which was the fishing guild because I remember months of my life when doing research papers (laughs) and (laughs) and doing the research there. I feel like the fishing Um, guild kind of, you know, just got the base of it in terms of what I would say. I thought they updated the fishing guild a few months ago or maybe a couple of years ago. I think the fishing guild got some treatment when they added the deep sea fishing hub, probably. Um, yeah. well, I actually believe it was quite a while before that where they did a bigger rework of it that redesigned all the buildings. It kept roughly yeah. the same layout, though. That's quite a while ago, though. Yeah, but I noticed, uh, yeah, that it did... I thought it did look more like um, the deep-sea fishing stuff, which I didn't notice that before. So maybe it's because I haven't been there. I, I don't know. 
the other thing that I thought was nice about this, though, the, the thing that stood out the most was that um, I could almost, like, not that I could almost miss it, but it's so not out of place at this point. Like, there's there's enough of the world that looks like this that it looks like it should be like this. Um, it wasn't, it didn't... I don't know. It, it wasn't like, whoa. Like, to me, it was like... It feels oh, like it fits. Is. Yeah, it just yeah. feels like it fits. And, 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 the, and like, that's the biggest concern. And that's why, why I asked Earth here is because, you know, you've, you've had concerns in the past with graphical updates and whatnot where they don't really fit, but they, but they do in this case. So that, I, I, I feel like that's there. And, you know, I'm just actually noticing it right now on one of the buildings. Are we in sure there. they updated the fishing guild? Well, I'm noticing uh, right now that at I the fishing guild, there's a, there's a shark on one of the roofs with a, with a smiley on it. I think, here, I'll go look there. I'll be able I to mean, the water tell which ground textures are there. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I swear they updated this before they updated the rest of it. Let's see. And and see, that that's the thing with this is that the the very fact this is all blending together shows how well it's integrated. Yeah. It's integrated right. within it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. my biggest thing, and this may at first sound like a bad thing, but it's very much not. Um, I had to ask if Piscatoris got updated because I went there and I couldn't tell. And that may sound like a bad thing, but that's a really, that's actually really a good, good thing. thing mm -hmm. Because it fits and it looks great. When it's I to mean, the I, point... Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I mean, it, it's not jarring, and it, it doesn't look outdated. It, it fits. It fits perfectly. Uh... Yeah, that's fair. I'm gonna run over to the Legends Guild too because I didn't. Yeah. Think to look at that. Um. Um. I I wanna I wanna ask Zant now which which one or I already asked you Zant on that uh, Earth which which area for you you know immediately um pops as being your favorite in terms of what was updated. Man, what the hell? You were just over there. Yeah, Did I you left. Take the fairy ring. Uh, Legends. Legends. Uh, Cape of Legends. Cape. Oh, you've got the Questscape on there? It, I have it in my inventory because, like, 90% of the reason I've logged in over the past two months is just to go to the Legends. <laughs> oh. There's reasons for that. There's reasons for that. <laughs> but, um, Earth, which area is your favorite? Uh, Poison Arrow Pub looks really good. All That's right. kind of one of my favorite sort of um I guess out of the way places. It's right south of the market if you want to run down there. Yeah, um, fair enough. Fair enough. You know the area that stood out the most for me on this and and you guys might agree or disagree on this, but it's the world gate. I feel like the the treatment yes. that they gave to the world oh, gate check there. and just how it's just sitting there. It's it's we know the story that it tells, but for somebody who has not done those quests yet, there's going to be such a feeling of story when they get there and they go see all the different cutscenes and everything that was Sixth Age and whatnot that mm -hmm. dealt with the world gate. So that's one that stands out for me. As well as, of course, the barbarian, um, the barbarian fishing area as well. As I spent tons and time, ton, oh, tons and shit. tons of time up there back in the day. I feel like I need a map that's just like circled oh, yeah. of what they've updated. Yeah, mm -hmm. that was. I was thinking that earlier. Was, the largest. Trying to figure it out. Um, so largest, there's an easy way. Um, so kingdom, right? Yeah. So yeah, there's an like easy I way. Thought... Of looking at, I thought it was just Ardoyan and no. So it's everything north of Ardoyan, um, minus the Sears Gnome Village Stronghold? stuff. Yep, Gnome Stronghold got the update. They updated the oh shit. Plus, also the Orania Altar got updated as well. 
in terms of in terms of things that have been updated for this. I know the Aranya Alter was uh, some of the some of the early concepts that they showed when when they were um, working and working through these graphical reworks. But the reason I mentioned the barbarian fishing area in particular is because I I, I feel like we've all done great amounts of barbarian fishing training up there. And I remember when that area first came out, this was of course the transition era between what was and what is now old school RuneScape and RuneScape HD. We of course had the waterfall and the whirlpool and whatnot there. And I remember that, you know, back in the day, their water tech with that, the waterfalls and the whirlpool seemed kind of janky and whatnot. Whereas now with the depth that's associated with that elevation change that's there, from up at Barbarian Fishing down all the way to Barbarian Assault. That's illustrated really well with the with the way the current engine renders things. And also with that, around the area of Barbarian Assault, those willows there is, is where I got uh, 99 wood cutting. So, you, you know, going back, you can just kind of see and reimagine what some of these things, what some of these things look like. And, and I guess that's, you know, kind of a different different tune on favorites but what areas you know immediately wow they added a bunch of hostas up here or something what what areas immediately for you guys evoke some kind of you know nostalgic feeling or something that you remember something you know going way back for one of these shane areas? real quick i just need to piggyback off of this uh the world gate because yeah. that area uh-huh man that that area really benefited from the r and r mountains kind of getting the treatment like yeah when you just like like if you center the world game on your screen like with the free cam, it just yep. looks like such a sick shot now. Yeah, it does. And, um, like I'm honestly considering using that, that as the particle effect. Like I'm yeah. honestly considering using that for the thumbnail on this week's show, something around there. And also, if you check out, um, you can see the mountains from Prif as well. Um, if you're kind of in the um, part of town that has like the trees, I don't remember which one that's called. Um, Ruth. Yeah, that one. Uh, so that's cool. It adds some new stuff to the skyline and Prif. But at the same time, if you like pay attention to it, you can kind of see that the tippy top of the mountains next to Prif are only like ten meters tall from the top of the tallest yew tree in Prif. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's a little wonky sometimes. Yeah, and and you know, I Ooh. I just feel that's just how Prif is. It's built. just that's just RuneScape scale. Like that's them having the monumental task of having to create a mountain range with this tiny little strip of land between two huge areas, one of which is already high elevation. Yeah. So Yeah. I think it's 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 impressive what they've done. Like seriously. And and to give give people a and an awareness of of how this goes is that, you know, people know that with the old school show I've been playing more old school with leagues and whatnot. Um but I've still been, you know, doing things on RS3. And the, the two things I, I say that I always miss about RS3 are the PVM and the graphical fidelity of the game. That's what I miss most. And this week just illustrates that entirely how this game has evolved since, since you know, uh, the, the NXT client came out, which is actually coming up on uh, eight years this uh, this April, guys. Believe it or not, NXT came out eight years ago this, this April. Oh, wow. I, I don't know what that says about us. Um, geez. We're old. Yeah. Well, this is the first time for the survey, which, by the way, update.show slash survey, if you're just pulling in from the middle of the show... <laughs> Um, I thought I had to put a 20 plus year option for how long have you been playing RuneScape? Yeah, I really didn't appreciate you doing that. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, most feelings evoked for me were probably around that, around Barbarian Assault and whatnot. Also, and I want to bring Zant in on this one in particular, the Legends Guild. Yeah. Because you know, 107 quest points. It's one of the one of the areas that you know we always say is one of the milestone quests in the game. And of course, RSBNB update also has an affinity to the Legends Guild since one of the first Patreon mailouts we did was years Uzant recreating the Legends Guild in Unreal. 
And I think with this, we saw the Legends Guild move a little bit closer in that direction. Yeah, so, like, I don't know. I was, I was from the beginning, like, knowing that Kandor was going to update, just kind of hyped to see what was going to happen with the Legends Guild, because I've become intimately familiar with the area uh, through the process of creating that. And, like, I was just super curious, like, literally every single detail that changed. And I get there, and I notice that the, there's ivy on the buildings, and it's, like, in the same place as, the, as I placed the ivy in our little Patreon mail out. And my mind's just blown, so I'm just sitting there looking at it. And then... I will say I just I straight up messaged Mod Black Witch about it and asked her, and she confirmed, yeah, she straight up referenced the video. So <laughs> seriously, that's like wow. honestly the, <laughs> that's one of the coolest cool. things in the world. Like, is like something I've done is kind of like just there in RS now, and like that's same with RSBNV. Just something RSBNV is just there reflected in the game world. Like, that's really cool. I love that. Uh, I think the Legends Guild uh, has the Legends Guild courtyard has to be our new meeting place. Yeah, seriously. Mm-hmm. And like, I think also like, also as well, the flowers, the hydrangeas, like they oh, weren't yeah, hydrangeas you, you, before. No, and you you went with those in in the yeah. video, didn't you? Yeah. So there's a couple little details like that, but the ivy placement on the little small building, it is like exact. Like it's you can't. Yeah, it's it. <laughs> <laughs> The made by Xanti um, Strigs not in there, is it? <laughs> what about uh, the chain sucks? I was actually, um, I was actually thinking for a second. I wonder if she like snuck something in like that because we had a couple of Easter eggs in there, a couple that people didn't know about as well. Oh, there's a Shane sucks one in there. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's really cool to see. I I didn't expect the guild to get as much treatment as it did. Like, no, because that also, area, um, you know, kind of just stands out already on its own. It had the new ground textures and whatnot, so. Also, I just noticed someone just came from the fairy ring, and there's like a point light with shadows, like on the fairy ring now. That's cool. Yeah, that's nice. neat. Uh, Tannis, what area for you evokes the most uh, memories from your past in this candor? Yeah, there is, isn't work? there? Well, like I said, I mean, it was, it was fishing guild but i can't be sure it was part of this now. <laughs> um but that's i mean i thought that was part of candor and that was one of the places i went to well technically you know, is part of candor check out. so and i and the other place i wanted to look at was i wanted to look at the ranging guild when i went over there i was like oh no they reworked this a while back so maybe the fishing guild maybe not all right, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, how about but you? I, I did like the zoo though too. Like yeah, the zoo yeah, was, okay. you know. How about you, Earth? What was the question? Uh, what area? <laughs> what area? Lost it. <laughs> what area for? What area for you evokes the most nostalgia in this graphical update? Mm, probably. That's tough. I mean, I spent a shit ton of time at Piscatoris. Um, so probably that. Yeah, and and you were mentioning the mood, and the mood feels lighting there. Right. Yeah. Because it, it and was they always a dock. I don't think there was a dock there before. No, there wasn't. At least not one that you could walk on. Mm-hmm. Which I, you know, always makes me wonder: Is there going to be an option to, you know, travel somewhere in in the future with that? But probably you not. You mean by boat? Yeah, by boat. By boat. You mean like by sail? Maybe a little invention and in steam. Mm. Yeah, we talked about that, didn't we? About how you know. If if any game's gonna get sailing as a meme, it should probably be RS3 at this point. Um, but uh, that, that's a topic for another show, as they say. We'll be talking about the Winter Summit and whatnot. It's in, in not the gonna keep the monkeys in. What? This is not going to keep the monkeys in. I'm at the zoo. Oh yeah, right. Fair enough. Yeah. 
You know, I was thinking Why about that a bit have more. A reaction. I thought you were calling us monkeys. Okay, seriously, on the zoo, I was thinking about this a bit more. I feel like I kind of see what they're going for now. Like, if you think about, like, when you go to, like, a zoo, like, you know how they're usually in this, like, pit, sort of, and the, like, actual mm-hmm. thing you have in front of you isn't super tall. I guess that's kind of what it is, but they're not going to, like, carve away more terrain for a rework like this, so. And honestly, they probably just didn't have updated, like, jail bars okay, or whatever. Okay, 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 but the snake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. For them. <laughs> Hell yeah, they're gonna get right out of there, right, Tannis? I mean, and this was my favorite part. Did you notice the snakes and how the snakes are stored? What about the no, ferret? No, Ferret's I didn't. Getting out. There are ferrets. There's a ferret down here. So is this like the next like bottle quest escape from Ardoin Zoo? <laughs> I'm in. Let's do it. <laughs> Have it it's be the like the next penguin uh, quest. Oh yeah, that's a good Wait, idea. That a, would be funny. I I think the bears could get out, and I would help them. Conspiracy about who changed all the uh, jail bars to be these dinky little wooden fences. Hmm. Also, another area that really just you know kind of feels much more immersive now as if it's like a, a hollowed out forest is the um a what a hollowed out forest it's the it's the cobalt uh skill trump a hunting area north of uh north of the grand tree stuff are you saying the force like the force <laughs> is with you the force yeah i mean it is in all of us but the collection mm-hmm. of trees oh a forest oh uh. I thought he me. said, I thought he said forced. I was like, he did. Forest? No, forced is what he said. I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so I made him re- say is it again. Like, there is so. a thing where I, instead of saying, apparently, as it's supposed to be said, forest, I just, you know, shorten it up and say forced. Hmm. But so you did mean forest. I did. I did. I did. Oh, okay. I did. Um, but from what you see here, Zant, which of these parts of this graphical rework do you feel uh, are the most, I guess, technically amazing for what we had? Because I don't think they they did much with new geometry for this kind of stuff, did they? You're not going to ask me which one's nostalgic to me? Oh, I thought we already covered you. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Go, go ahead. Most nostalgic. <laughs> I'm assuming Legends Guild, but surprise me. Um, well, I want to say that, but I don't honestly have too much nostalgia attached to that other than like the RSBNB like postcard thing. Um, and I kind of want to say Piscators, but someone already said that. So I'm going to say West Ardoin because like fucking yes, this is like <laughs> great. <laughs> like, dude, the lighting here is exactly how I would picture West Ardoin to be. You know, like, it's doing this area so much justice. And it's even got this, like, cool, like, rolling fog effect on the ground. And it's raining. Oh, it's great. Like, yeah, we didn't talk about West Ardoin. Uh, look at the fog crap, over here. Like, I should have went there, it's so dude. so good. This is the first time I think you've, we've seen some sort of, like, volumetric-ish looking effect like that in RS. Please tell me they still have the gallows. Oh, yeah. Oh, we got some of the best screenshots in the world at the gallows. <laughs> I'm a little I'm bit terrified. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what the hell you were going for, but okay. But yeah, it's just nice seeing this this part of town be like super gloomy. Like that's exactly what it needs to be, and it's, it is. It's so going to give a new. It's going to give a new dimension to the Plague Quest and Plague's End in particular, I think, especially, you know, remembering the musical score of Plague's End and how much time we spent in there before, you know, actually um, head, heading west. So. Kick in the door, wave in the foe, foe. Right. Best part. Right. Okay. Okay. Zant, come here. Where you at? What? Come here. What are we trying to look at? What are we trying to look at? The the underground 
path entrance. Oh. oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's another that's another hot spot in this one and one of the areas that was teased out uh, in some of the early screenshots. What do we think the like <clears throat> I feel like now you can walk from Brock, from Lumbridge, to Ardoyan and out west here, and now just you know experience graphical areas that have been a hundred percent updated, and I feel like that's, yeah, that's gotta be good. like that's gotta be good for the new player experience and people coming in. Oh, look at the yeah, it feels stones on this. On yeah, it was Wizard's Tower here. I was meaning Dark to access. Tower. Yeah, what what happens in what happened in here? I didn't remember what this room was for. I'm pretty sure that's the old texture. Is, the... is it? I don't know. I can't tell. It looks. I don't think so. Not. It that looks like it could be. It looks like either that or like a slightly tweaked version of the one that was on it before. And and to be clear, what we're just what we're talking about now is there's I'm this. I'm pretty sure it wasn't this. Oh no, the inside, hey. holy shit. Yeah, the inside's definitely. Yeah, there's the Dark yeah. Mage's house on the way to the underground pass with a nice pink glowing cauldron in there that's just emanating light, which, you know, um, doing lots of wonderful work with that. Oh, this view of the mountains is great. So. Yeah. And like the sun coming down? Yeah. The shadows, the giant shadows it's casting, it's perfect. I actually think um, the lighting and, like, the tuning of, like, the color of the fog with the lighting and how that all interacts with each other is, like, literally 10 of 10 with this update. Mm -hmm. And that's something I think in the past hasn't always been there. But, man, like, even in the places where it's just kind of blue sky out, like, the sun has this really nice soft yellow glow around it, and it, like, has the volumetrics with it. Like, it goes through the trees and such. And, and to be just, clear, what you're talking about when you mention volumetrics is just how the light diffuses in the air, right? Yeah. 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 So it makes like the little uh, shiny rays. Um, and also like the fog color, like it, it fades to a color that looks believable when it gets close to the ground and such. And, you know, you don't get any of that weird effect like you see in RS sometimes where you got this blue sky with like white fog behind it or in front of it, and it's kind of like this jagged silhouette of the um, scenery in the background. But no, everything is, like, tuned great, and it's kind of, like, diffuses at distance, and it just looks really, really good. You so, know what someone needs to do? Lighting and fog. Someone needs to make, make like, a, like, a TV advertisement for the, for the um, Plague Series quest using these new graphics here um, in West Rodoyan. Uh, this is so good. Like, seriously, I want to see some, like, RSMVM stuff, like, now that we've got large sections of the world looking like this. And especially with, like, these vastly different, like, moods to the world, you know? Like, we talked about in, um, I think, the monthly bit I was on, or one of the last episodes I was on, like, Yeah, how, the, the graphical future one. Yeah, how each area kind of has its own, like, color identity now. And yeah. That's exactly That's just, it. That's exactly yeah. what this is capturing. And exactly. what we said on that was that was, and that's, you know, how they've chosen to execute the RuneScape graphical identity in 2024, rather than, you know, focusing in on your own character identity. It's the world instead that speaks. And obviously your character can look great and whatnot, but it's the... It's the environments, I think, that have really been carrying things with this. And we're seeing yeah. that again. <laughs> and well, I think the cool thing is, like, this they're just this is all technique. I mean, the stuff that they're doing to make this these updates, this is all stuff that like except maybe the volumetric lighting and you know, like the point light shadows, that's all stuff that could have been done as soon as NXT came on. Because yeah. it's just it's just updating assets, fine tuning fog, fine tuning lighting. And just really throwing artists at the game and saying, here, make it look good. Yeah. And, and you know, that's also something to jump on, is that these things started as a game jam project. And then they got the green light to go and become more widespread like these ones have done. Even updated the sewers, I think. 
I think they did the. I think they probably did the sewers and the underground pass previously. I think that was done previously. The underground pass was. Yeah, I believe that. I know was the underground with... pass was because I did that on old school recently. Um... You mentioned the you mentioned the monthly bit on graphical futures, and that's a good time to thank our Patreon supporters for this week. <laughs> thank you for doing that, Zant, because. You're we talk about these sorts of things each and every month on the monthly bit. Like our last monthly bit that came out um, not too long ago was about the Slayer task list, the Hot or Not Slayer task list, which uh, Pernasius, Thaxi, T- and Tannis were a part that, you know, Tannis, you, you spearheaded that and did a, did a great job on it. So thank you for that. Um, but I'm going to thank our Patreon supporters for this week. Then we'll go a little bit deeper into into what's available there at patreon.com slash rsbnb. This week, I'd like to thank Alvaro L., Amos Reed, Andrew C., Arvidzel, Chulbura, Dominic R., Drama Free, Dura Max, Free Milk, Guy Lafleur, Jacob G., Jade Gizmo, Jason S., Jeebus, Jesse W., Keski, Lemon Lodge, Ling01, Luminos, Nate the Great, Pernasius, Renhawk, Ricky A, Runestar, Samuel FL, Scott DS, Shirtpants, The Naked Captain, The Dab and Goat, Tim, Tom V, Ukulele Steve, Zant, and Zazakon. Big huge thank you to everybody on this list and everybody who supports us on Patreon for allowing us to do what we do. If you want to learn more about that, patreon.com slash rsbnb. We have plans available starting for as little as a dollar a month. And for that, you'll receive a special mention in our show notes. You'll get access to an entire back catalog of monthly bits or bonus shows, as we call them, where we talk about one specific thing each and every month. The previous month was our discussion on Slayer tasks, hot or not. We built a we built a list of Slayer tasks that people liked and people disliked. Um, how how are you feeling about that list, Tannis? Uh, after with that being a little while out now. Oh, I'm pretty pretty happy with it. I I hope we get to go back and dig into uh into the skill a little bit more someday. I I I'd like to do that from a different direction I think than you would if I'm being 100% honest. <laughs> we know, but you know, you can't be right all the time and you're definitely not this time. Okay. I, and I did want to I did want to bring Earth into, into this discussion wow. because um, on the show we put the we put the gemstone dragons into the not not hot list, but you you actually agreed with Tannis on this one. Gemstone dragons, hot or hey, not? You're a f-ing moron for doing that. They're objectively the best one. Like one point four mil XP an hour. Uh-huh. Zant, what do you think about gemstone dragons? If you do the Hydrix ones, mm-hmm. Shane's wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I've never really done them as a Slayer task. I only ever see them at ED2. Okay. So, fair no enough. No opinion. All right, fair enough. Um, but we also, of course, have Zant's uh, RuneScape graphical future that we were just referencing where we talk about what the RuneScape graphical identity looks like heading into 2024 and beyond with that so lots of lots of good topics that get discussed uh, there for the monthly bit and you know looking at the calendar it's almost time to put up another poll here um for the second monthly bit of 2024 but we also do have the vip tier for three dollars a month where you uh get a special vip rank on our discord including chat channel access a mention on the podcast at the start of the month and as well as weekly high quality stereo versions of the show and we also do have our insider tier where for five dollars a month you'll receive a shout out on the podcast each and every week and gain exclusive access to the outtakes we use to make the clip show at the end of the year. And of course, uh, when December comes around, um people who are subscribed at Insider and Higher will also get the RSBMB update Patreon Christmas card, which I got lots of good feedback on this year. So hopefully you guys all enjoyed that. And of course we have our uh experienced tier folks who I mentioned earlier in the podcast. Uh Lots of fun stuff happens there too, but that tier is presently presently sold out. Uh, Patreon.com slash RSBNB. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks. All right. Um, okay, where were we with, with the graphical update? Uh, I think we did everybody's nostalgia picks, didn't we? I think mm-hmm. we did. Um, is that te- technologically, you know, based on what we see here, which areas, you know, stand out to you? 
So, Zad, I think we did most of the nostalgia picks here, but, you know, based on what we've seen here, are you seeing anything, you know, technologically or whatnot that, that looks new to you based on what you've seen them do in the past? Or is there anything that technologically stands out to you at, in this, you know, selection of rework that they hadn't done before? I'm not really seeing anything super new other than maybe... In uh, West Ardoin, there's some nice, like, rolling fog kind of along the ground, um, which I imagine is like a texture, like an animated texture type thing, which that's just a really cool implementation. It's like, looks really cool as well. But I seriously think, like, what I was harking on earlier about, like, the fine tuning of the lighting and fog and just making that stuff looking really real and believable, I think that's the closest thing I could say, really. Um, Other than. Maybe the Arandar Mountains, just the scale of like how many rocks that took to do. It's yeah, like, it, it really does make it, you know, pop and makes it yeah. feel like a mountain range there, which it which it didn't do before. So And seriously, that's like a lot of rocks. And um one thing I do know about the RuneScape engine is that I mean, I guess maybe this could have changed in the last year, because that's when I learned about this. But it doesn't have a level of detail system, so um, objects are either there or they're not there. There is no like half res version of the objects or quarter res version of the objects that comes in at a certain distance. So because of that, you kind of are just looking at full res objects everywhere at all times. If you see it, it's like it's full res version. So the fact that they have that many rocks being rendered is kind of, like, nuts. Like, they can't make it so rocks past a certain distance are, like, half the polygons. like most Right, or make it kind of like they, you know, fade in and whatnot, right? Because, you yeah. know, like, there is the fog system, but if you have your draw distance set to ultra, you're going to see those from far out still, and you're going to get a perspective mm-hmm. of, what, of, of, you know, what's there on the horizon, so... Yeah, now, what I'm talking about, it's mostly, like, a quality performance thing. Like, them not being able to reduce the quality of something that's at distance because it is, you know, a smaller object on your screen. Well, that's, like, that's a lot of potential performance that's, like, being missed out on. So, like, the fact that they are able to do a giant mountain like Arandar with this rock kit that has several assets duplicated over and over and over and over on your screen, and they're all being rendered at their, like, native size, like, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed that that works. Yeah, it's, and, it's... And, and see, that's the thing. I'm not feeling any, and, you know, I, I do have beefy computers, which I, I realize is, is a thing some people might not have. Yeah. But I'm not feeling any kind of, you know, performance hit with this. It'd be interesting to, you know, see what people who run on the, you know, the the min to me, medium uh, spectrum feel on these graphical updates with that. Yeah, that'd be really interesting to see. I have, haven't played RS south of like 60 frames a second in years. So. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so privileged here at Update, aren't we? <laughs> with with the, um, with the hardware we have i will say one other little thing i think i did notice that maybe stood out as new to me is i did notice that some of the rocks especially around the backstory area looked like they had a little moss on them i don't think there was a rock asset that had any of that before no so that definitely that that definitely was not there before so that's cool that tells me that they are doing some like asset or at least like material variations for some of these rocks because I think that was one of the things that a lot of people in the community were kind of uh, starting to complain about with these reworks is that we have the same rock everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, it's fair, yeah. like developing a whole rock kit like that's that's an entire process. It's not just grab an image and model rock like there's so much more to figure out about rocks like um and how they like fit together and how you build things with them. And then how the pieces that you build together fit with other pieces and stuff like that. It's just this whole thing. So it's cool to see them doing some variations where they can take their existing stuff and have just more variety. And we're not getting the same gray rocks everywhere. Yeah. And I think I even noticed that about the ones in R and R they're kind of more, uh, 
a warmer kind of sandy kind of color. Yeah, that's true. Um, I also wanted to ask, you know, you mentioned the, the term variation there. I wanted to ask, uh, did you notice that they actually added a new variation of evergreen tree here that we didn't oh have Oh my before? gosh. Yes, thank you. In, I'm in so like, glad you uh, mentioned this. Piscatoris and the Barbarian area, you can definitely see this. Those. Actually, I, this was something I did want to bring up in the technically impressive zone because um, we know how hard it is to update <laughs> the trees in RS, supposedly. So, like, dude, what the fuck? They updated the trees. Like, <laughs> so for those of us who aren't in on the joke, can can you? Explain why it's supposedly so difficult to update the trees. I don't remember. I feel like the I'm missing something. Yeah. So this. I don't remember the exact. Yeah. Thing, so but... I, I I actually had the opportunity to ask Mod Blackwitch about this oh, on the cool. on the behind the cr- behind the crown episode, and the reason updating trees are so difficult in RS is because the base of the tree. And the canopy of the tree are two different things. So for every tree yeah. that exists in the game, you have to replace the base of it and the canopy. And as such, you got to make them so that, you know, the, the, they look like they fit. And it's not just something where you can, you know, just snap your fingers and say, we're going to update every tree in Candor. And you have to manually go through and, in effect, change all the trees. And I think one other thing I remember from that conversation as well is that the newer trees are a lot higher res than the old ones. Like, the old ones that you see in-game for, like, the standard trees are, like, potatoes, yeah, relatively yeah. speaking. So, if you, you, you update all those trees, you're adding a huge amount of geometry to the game. And I just think the scale of what that's at and the fact that they, like I said before, they, RuneScape does not have level of detail. Like, it can't scale the oh, yeah. um, resolution... Um, of an object based on its distance. So that tree is going to be rendering all of its leaves and everything, regardless of how far away it is from you. And that's just not something that most games have to deal with. Did I send you that thing from the last December game jam where I forget which J mod was working on it, but they were working on potentially adding wind to the game. And it was showing things like, you know, like the flowers and the leaves on the trees yeah. actually blowing in the wind. I did see that. And that's, that's, that's so cool. Like, that's the kind of stuff I want to keep seeing. Because like, we thought, for example, that when they added these new trees, that they were just static models, right? But we get mm-hmm. this, and and I just looked it up, we get this post um, from uh, Mod Garagast on the December early December game jam that shows that, you know, there, there's aspects of the of the ground foliage and also the trees that are just, that are just sitting there swaying in the wind. And we didn't know that something like that would be possible in Engine. So that, yeah. combined with the graphical update that we have this week, really shows the level of fidelity, I guess, that's capable in NXT. It's just it was never really capitalized on before, right? Yeah. And seriously, like the wind thing, I think that's another thing that was probably either possible or close to possible before. Um, as I understand and how I saw it, implemented i think what i'm seeing it looks like it's like a shader like uh texture like displacement kind of effect okay okay explain what that means for those unaware (laughs) so effectively um on the actual material itself not the model it's not sitting there animating the actual model but the textures and the material that's on the model um has a texture that is like black and white and kind of wavy pattern scrolling side to side affecting the position of each uh, vertice on your mesh so basically it's like a noise texture going side to side making um anything affected by it like wave kind of like it's being waving by the wind it's not actually being affected by like a certain like wind direction or anything like that potentially rather it's just approximated really then yeah, it's like adding a display, a turbulent displace effect in like After Effects where it makes your screen all wavy and warpy. It's like similar to that kind of thing. All right. Okay. Um, and I, I think that kind of stuff's cool. Like when I was doing the Legend Skill scene, that's how I added wind to the trees. Like Unreal Engine has a uh, has a node on just the material graph 
That's world position offset. And basically, um, based on the color of your texture at that vertice, um, determines what it does to the position of that vertice in world space. So, like, you know, if it's, like, white, it stays in its spot. If it's black, it gets moved up a meter or something. So you can have that on a texture with a bunch of different color variants um, affecting different parts of your model, creating this warping effect that kind of just looks like wind. Nice. Also, I'll just note that if you go to the uh, Barbarian Agility course and you look over to where Fish Flingers is, you can see that they still haven't removed the Christmas presents uh, from the trees there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Zan, yeah I would also... love to see the wind come in, though. Seriously, that would add a lot to the environments to just like make it feel a lot more alive. It's a very little thing, but like, um, especially areas like uh, West Ardoin where you got the rain and like that low fog on the ground, and it's just got the subtle movement. It just really makes things kind of like you squint and it kind of looks real almost, you know? Yeah. It, it's just adding realism to it. And I think that would probably be mm-hmm. the best way to describe this entire update. All right. Anybody have anything else on uh Kandarin, uh, before we move on to patch notes for the week? Nope. No. Going once. I got nothing. All right. Going once. Going twice. Gondola. little reference from last year's shows. Gondola. Yeah, from the Necromancy show. Oh, right. Because you don't know how to say gondola. All right. All right. Patch notes. Um, This is something I was going to mention in the, in the graphical update section. They removed the agility shortcuts from the Arendar Pass. Are they needed anymore? So do you just like walk through now? Yeah, you, you can just walk. Okay. You just walk straight Great. through. There's no agility Love between it. like Perfect. To, to get. Back in my day, we had to walk <laughs> the whole path. Even though I seriously think at this day and age, agility shortcuts should work like you don't have to click it. You can just like click to walk through it and it'll, you'll just like go over it. Like, I feel like if that works, then they would probably be a bit more practical. If only we could be so lucky. If only we could be so lucky. But seriously, like, I think removing them is, like, the best alternative. Like, in a case like that, because... I've never been a big fan of agility shortcuts, personally. No, we're not fans of agility in general. And I'm not, and I'm not going to sit here and act like they're important to agility or something. No, so. no, no. Agility needs to be seriously reconsidered. Um, I yeah, think for it, real. It, it's present spot in the game. Um, but for real patch notes, uh, some some more changes for Vorkath and Zamorigal. They removed a safe spot from Zamorigal's uh, bone spike attack during the battle of four and three. The new Serenic and Draculic set effects now work in PvP. The contents of the Death Ward necklace will be, or Nexus will now be visible after death. Which, by the way, if you guys haven't made your Nexus yet, go make it. You just uh, use some components and go through the Killy type uh, process for that. They also uh, slightly tweak the timing of the Vorkath hovering breath attack so that the animation now lines up with the damage hit a bit better. Which, of course, was I think probably one of the last big things that uh, needed to be fixed before or it needed to be fixed going back to launch week on this. So that's good. And Undead Dragon, Draculic, and Elite Draculic armor pieces now all have now unique weights. That's another system that could go, right? The weight system. Disagree strongly. Why? Vital to the game. Why? I feel like it could totally be repurposed into something having to do with agility and combat, but I don't know. I mean, like, I, I see a nice ranged, uh, like, roguelike ranged kind of connection there with agility and weight and ranged. But I feel like after you reach a certain agility level, weight doesn't matter anymore. And, you know, you pretty much at most points now have, have infinite run energy too, right? So, I don't know. I, I feel like... Something having to do with character movement speed. <laughs> oh, that's an interesting idea. Though we already kind of get around fast enough with you know surge and dive and all that. I'm telling all you, the like, shenanigans those like that. from agility. Those should be unlocked from agility. I think they. I think they. Yeah. Did, I think they did make that change though. Um, let me just. Let me I know just... double surge and escape. They come from that one course. 
Um, let's see. That I mean, uh, they come yeah. from the. Uh, sorry, yeah, Zant, uh, you now exchange. unlock no, Surge and Escape at level five agility. I'm the Grand Exchange. <laughs> Correct, <laughs> yeah, but but I I don't know when they did it, but you now now uh, surge and escape are, are uh, level five agility. They did make that change sometime last year. Really? Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, their agility. Yeah. No shit. Yeah, they're in the agility ability book. That's dope. So there you there you go. Um, I didn't re- did that happen at the same time as dive coming in? No, I think Dive came in first, and then they Dive had an agility requirement behind it, so then they heard from the players and then did Surge uh... Escape after that. So, uh, Lanakea's special task can now be canceled using Slayer points, just like all other special tasks, as you should cancel Slayer tasks that you don't enjoy. I handed that one to you on a silver platter there, Earth. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a clockwork syringe uh, now points toward the player's current POH instead of just the uh, Paul Nivniich player-owned house portal. The click box... Way is... back. Yeah, that goes way back. Uh, I'm trying to re- remember that quest, but I imagine at some point... I'll get there on Old School if that one was, is post-2007. Uh, the click box is now aligned to the model of Tolna's human form during the quest, A Soul's Bane. That's another one that goes way back. Way, way back. And looking at that quest from the lens of today, because that was one I did on Fresh Start and Old School and Leagues. Oh my god, somebody was experiencing some kind of trauma there with that quest. And I would not recommend that quest to anybody who, uh, you know, doesn't like being scared. Yeah, that shit era. was dark. <laughs> yeah, it was dark back then, and it mm-hmm. you know even it, it's even aged that way today. That it's still like, oh my god, this is in game. That's like some kind of weird kind of dark too. <laughs> um, using sunshine and death swiftness with the planted feet perk will now last thirty seven point eight seconds to match greater sunshine and greater death swiftness, respectfully. For people being aware, there was about a two tick difference between the two of them. So now they're equal. Greater Sunshine and Greater Death Swiftness have had their tooltips amended to more accurately display how long the abilities are active. Bladed Dive can now be used with non-weapon offhand items and non-weapon mainhand items after unlocking it from the Shattered World's reward shop. People have been asking for this one for years. And it's here finally. Thank you. That is so nice. Yeah. Um, and I, I feel like this is just an example of looking and seeing, you know, this is how this thing wound up being used by the player base. It wasn't intended to be that way. It was intended to be a melee combat ability, but it's turned into a melee combat ability, but it's turned out to be one of the, you know, the the core keystones of movement in the game so well, i guess this patch is i guess kind of less useful now that dive is just a thing everyone has yeah that's true that's true like there's no benefit to blade a dive purely for movement and you know hey that was that was one of the main reasons why i initially went to shattered worlds but shadow worlds actually is okay now and you know one of my favorite pieces of content in the game really yeah it's actually good after uh, they they did a number of ninja strikes to it. Pretty fun. I don't know. And with some of the mods do changes that came out at the tail end of twenty twenty three. Really good for um invention uh leveling up uh per- of perks and whatnot and weapons too. Cause basically what happened with it is that after Necromancy came out and they tuned everything down, the XP that you got from Shattered Worlds also went down, which had the side effect of making it so that it was harder to level up weapons and whatnot in Shattered Worlds, which people didn't like, but changes uh, did go out, or I don't know if they're out yet, but I know Mods 2 posted about it, that they were 
going to make these changes uh, for that. I'll have to look after the show and see if those actually came out or if they're still in the still in the planning phase. But uh, the final the final patch note is that the fountain now in East Falador has been added back. And when what? did they remove it? What happened? I to have it? I have no idea. No okay, idea. I went and looked at it, and it looks right there. But I, part of me wants to say that it hasn't been there in years. We gotta go to Falador. Check this out. Get to the bottom of it. And that's not an area I would take a screenshot in, so I'm not sure. Does anybody have a screenshot of it without the fountain? No. Like when? when, <laughs> when party we... room. If you've got the right angle. So it's this one next to the party room, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember a time where that was never not there, so. You know, it probably well, when's just. the last time you went over to East Falador right there? Or rather, I worded that badly, but yeah, I remember, never remember that not being there. Like, it probably just disappeared, you know, a few weeks back and they're just starting to see it, so. You know what I'm really sad that they fixed? I'm sad that they a lot fixed of the... that crazy water wheel in Lumbridge. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a hilarious one, wasn't it? <laughs> Some of these changes I feel a little gaslit by, though. Like, yeah, that fountain was always there. <laughs> or was it? <laughs> also, I, I have been... That's, I have been... people here in like a year saying that, no, y'all, the water wheel wasn't messed up. <laughs> no, we saw it. It got messed up after necromancy or something. What are you talking about, Shane? The water wheel wasn't yeah, messed up. Yeah, Shane, what are you talking about? <sighs> yeah, how long was Shane, this fountain Shane, missing? Shane, you've been acting different lately. <laughs> I'm worried about you. You're right. I feel like last time I was here for the artisan's workshop, this fountain was not here. Anyways. I think Jagex is gaslighting us. There was never a fountain there, and then Mod Bl Blackwitch just wanted to add one because it looked like it needed it. Now they're saying, oh, we added it back. I And, you know, I love it my water features. There. Hey, yeah, at least they get a patch note out of it. Obsession. Yeah. That's it for patch notes this week. I think with that, uh, we can we can move on to uh maybe a bit of sadness and that the official forums are being sunset which i mean i guess makes sense at this point in the game i think in terms of where yeah, we're at uh, it it doesn't really sadden me no not, not really no. i still wish they'd leave them in a read only state forever like yeah, just to kind of like preserve the archive of it, because what they're yeah, doing is on cause... on the twenty fifth they're going read only, and then re being removed entirely on March twenty eighth. You know, maybe yeah. nobody uses it like this anymore, but I kind of like wish they would leave the trading section just so RS has some kind of like, oh, uh, you know, like form based trading thing that's not the GE, that's not in game. It's like you post what you're selling here, and then somebody can reply to it, that type thing. How like, much I've does just, it get used for that currently, though? That's what I'm curious about. I really don't know. I just think, as a thing, it's cool to have that officially. Mm hmm. And, you know, I, I feel like the thing that we were using these. Uh, the most for at least on the clan quest side was uh, the recruitment, which you know, in a bit of irony, you know, I bumped our clan quest recruitment thread for the first time in 2024. Then the day after that, <laughs> they announced that they're removing the forums like literally <laughs> the morning after, and uh, nobody else laughed at it, but I thought it was hilarious. But, um there's something special about all the stuff people had to do back in the day to get those crazy recruitment threads looking like they do. Amazing, like the yeah, different... like... Well, no, you know, like, all the different combinations of symbols that you can type, and, like, people learned, like, Ask oh, well, this art. symbol is higher on the page, so you can make squiggly lines with it. 
Yeah, yeah we have an ASCII. Like we have an ASCII quest point cape on ours. Oh my yeah. gosh, that's epic. <laughs> Which I don't oh, I think we're, so which much. I don't think we're bringing over to Discord. Though we did, we did move over to a Discord recruitment thread um, after that, and you know, I'll, I'll just say uh, it's probably a good time to mention it that if anybody out there is looking for a clan, Clan Quest is a good place to be. Um, just uh, join the join the clan chat, Clan Quest, and if you're interested in joining, ask myself or earth about how to invite if you see us on or just head on over to apply uh, dot clankwest.org slash rs3 for that but nice plug shane they say the forums represent a very small fraction of discussions happening in runescape and their current functionality falls short compared to what other platforms can provide now they say it's evident that vital Conversations and community voices get lost, whereas external platforms offer enhanced functionality, including live streaming stages, voice chat channels, and more convenient shortcuts to get to the topics that are most relevant to you. And given to the strong preference of other platforms among our p- other players, we've decided, therefore, to channel more of our staff time and resources into these platforms for improved engagement. Um, which, I mean, makes sense. It's basically saying that, you know, Discord has... Uh, displace that, and and you know, I I feel like that's fine. I don't personally see any problem that's going to come from this. I, I and you know, hey, I'm going to be a hundred percent honest. If it wasn't for a few topics on the RSBNB forums, we have actually considered doing the same thing too for the RSBNB forums too. So, but we're not. We're not quite he's talking there yet. about my goals topic. I threatened <laughs> to riot if he shut down the forums after. Um... Let's see how many one thousand five hundred seventy five posts on my goals topic. <laughs> that and the weekly RSBNB update discussions are what the RSBNB update or the RSBNB forums are used for these days. Man, I haven't been on those forums in forever. But so I logged into the uh, RuneScape forums and I am the one active user online right now. Oh yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's kind of crazy, though, like, I, I don't know, just not looking at the RuneScape forums in years. It's just kind of crazy going on here and seeing, like, just the general section. 2.7 million threads, like, Jesus. man, this what? was, this was popping one day, like, a long time ago. I remember and back. That's, oh, my God, 25 million posts. Yeah, well, dude, look down the discontinued no. items and stuff, like, uh. Weapons, armor, and skilling supplies in the trading section. Nine million threads, fifty million posts. And you know what the fun bit is? I remember back in the day we used to read rants from the forums there. And at some point they they, oh, they, yeah. they got rid of the rants form and then brought it back. Oh yeah. I remember that. There was a whole stink about it. Uh, in any case, um let's move on to the achievements of the week. Uh Tannis, you're starting us off. All right, we have Turd Sniffer Zero with 99 Necromancy. Right on. Uh, we have Hephaisto 5 with 99 Fishing on the 15th. And Poison Nova got 120 Woodcutting on January 15th. Then we have Jad Chor with 120 Crafting on the 13th, and Jam Andy 52 with 99 Necromancy on January 11th. Well done, everybody. Bit of a shorter list uh, this week compared to last week. All right. Uh, we have two picks of the week this week. Um, Earth, what do you got for us? You said it's a game. You didn't tell me what it was. What do you got? Um... So I have been playing a very old game. It's a re-release of it, um, but it's called Planescape Torment. It is an old RPG Dungeons & Dragons setting. Um, It uses the same version of the Infinity Engine, which the first two Baldur's Gate games used. Oh. And... It is probably the most philosophical game I've ever played. Um, it's from. It was originally released in 1999, and if you've never played a game from the 90s, um, 
was back like when this was a niche hobby there's oh, no yeah. voice acting mm-hmm. um and this is when you know games punished you if you died or you did something wrong there was no you know go well, back see, to that's the last funny. checkpoint death is death is part of the game you have to die um the um I mean the the setting is basically this guy wakes up in a morgue. Oh God! And he's been cursed with or- immortality, so he can't die, and he wants to, but he doesn't know who he is. That's but he's an interesting the nameless one. That's an interesting premise. I will give you that. It's phenomenal, but it is. The script I read somewhere, um, the script was about 800,000 words. Um, give you point of reference, Fellowship of the Ring word count is 187,000. So it's eight so, times, almost eight times, four times as long as Lord of the Rings, one of the Lord of the Rings. Yeah, the longest one. Um so there's a lot of reading involved. It, I was upset when I finished it. <laughs> Why is that? Like it's one of those games. Oh, you're upset that it's over, kind of thing, right? Yes. Okay, fair enough. Um, and it's Chris Avalone who wrote my favorite game of all time, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2. He also wrote um, Fallout New Vegas as a writer on that and a lead writer on the DLC. Um, What else was he on? Fallout 2, he was the designer. Um, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, he was a writer, so... You know, the guy's damn good. Nice. So and that's my pick of the week. And, you know, given, given of course, the error, we have to assume this will run on pretty much any computer then. Um, so there's an enhanced edition, um, which was released. 2017. In... Yeah, and that runs on Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, Windows, then there's a Switch, PS4, and Xbox One version. Got it. So pretty much everything under the sun today, then. Yeah. Nice. All right. Uh, we're also... Uh... I would recommend... Well, I know... Try it out. The Enhanced Edition is pretty good. All right. Keyboard and mouse, or controller, or Steam Deck, or what? Which would, would I mean, it depends on what you play it on. Um, I played it on my PS4, and it was perfect. So, all right, sounds good. Uh, we're also doing uh, two picks of the week this week. And Zan, you mentioned you wanted to do this one, and I agree with you on it. So go for it. <laughs> So um, I've been using this weather app for about three-ish, four-ish years now uh, called Carrot Weather, and it's pretty great. Like, uh, I am have been subscribed to, like, their Ultra tier and everything for a while. I absolutely love it, but um, I used it on iOS. It's um, this awesome weather app. Um, I think one of my favorite things about it, just... Base levels, you can choose what your source is, where your data comes from. Um, You get access to way more sources if you, uh, like, subscribe to their thing as well. Um, But you you get um, three from just for free. Like, I think it's, like, Apple Weather, Forca, and then um, some other one. I don't remember. But um, the main thing about the app that's great is just how well designed it is how much personality it has and i was gonna uh, ask about that (laughs) customizable it is and yeah let's get to let's do the personality thing first because i'm gonna be real with you this is like the thing i care least about with this app i mean it's funny yeah sometimes but it has a personality like carrot is like an ai machine thing that that you can tune 
right? So depending yeah. on how you like it, you can, you know, have you can it make be, a curse at you if you want. Yeah, you can have it be kind of annoying to you, or you can, like you said, have it curse at you. You can tune conservative liberal the entire thing. And mm -hmm. I know I'm jumping in on this, but this is one thing I do want to jump in on. You know, there's the voices for it, right? That you can have it read out to you, right? Yes. Yeah, I haven't played it too much, but okay. yes, I know it's a thing. With the new version, newest version of iOS 17, you can create a personal voice in iOS that sounds Wait, does like it? you. Yes, it does support that. that. <gasps> so you know, you I've been tempted to do that with my own voice. But you should. It's like Fifteen minutes worth of recording, so like. <laughs> you should. It it took me about twenty five minutes to do my recording, and of course Shane's done it. That's and, awesome. <laughs> and it came out. It it wasn't as Shane Shapiro as you know some of the other AI things were, but it was lacking a bit of personality. But you could definitely tell it was me. So <laughs> that was one of the things that I wanted to talk about with this is that it can hook into your iOS personal voice if you've done something like that. So I'll let you I'll let you carry on with the rest of the features you want to talk about. I just had to mention that, that you could use personal well, voice. Well I'm glad we like went that direction with it because I seriously think the contrast between this kind of goofy side of the app and the fact that it's also just an amazing weather app. Like it's an amazing weather app. Um completely customizable UI. Um down to like the spacing and divider type between like the individual panels on your screen. Um, you can even make it like uh, change which layout you can set like layout presets and have it like change layout based on the weather and stuff. So if it like starts raining, you can have it switch to one that has like all your weather info and such. Um, but it's very beautiful. Um, it's got this nice landscape thing in the background yeah. for like the top like, of it. Like I see this is one level below Windy, which is the other ultimate weather app, right? Yeah. So this one is definitely a bit more meant to be kind of fun as well, but it's still definitely meant to be a kick-ass weather app. And they um, also on their website say that you keep all the features you love from the Dark Sky app because the Dark Sky weather app was something um, that Apple acquired and shut down. So they specifically made portions of the app feel like the Dark Sky app for people who wanted to come over. Yeah, and actually uh, one of their layout presets is like one that's basically like a clone of like the Dark Sky like default. Yeah. Um, and also uh, personally... Um, one other thing I like is they're very on top of like the newest iOS features as well. Um, the second that widgets came online, they had a shit ton of widgets to use. Um, and if you subscribe to like their premium tier, you can get like real time ones. So like uh, on my iPad that I keep in my uh, living room to control like home stuff, I keep a weather radar widget there. Um, just you know, like on the screen at all times. Like I use Windy a lot, but I'm I'm wondering if I need to you know get a bit of premium in this too. Yeah, I think the widgets are great. Um, and also the live activities. It does live activities as well, um, which on iOS, if you don't know, it's kind of like if you like order an Uber or something, it can show you like an in-progress notification with like the steps completed and oh, stuff it has like that. on your home screen. Yeah, it has that for like when it starts raining. Like it'll show you like a graph of what the rain's going to be doing over like the next like hour. Did you, did as you a live used to activity. watch the Weather Channel when that was a thing on TV? Yes. And okay. you want to know what's funny? When I was a kid, I didn't watch like Nickelodeon stuff as much as most kids. I watched the Weather Channel. Nice. I I might like, have done. I might have done that exactly too. Exactly like you, Shane. I I was like ten years old, just staring at the Weather Channel, like getting fed all these commercials for like, <laughs> you know, geriatric medicine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, we got two picks that take us way back to, you know, the late 90s on that front then. Right on. Uh, anything else on Carrot then? It's just it's just a great weather app. Like, seriously, um, I completely replaced the stock weather app for me. Um, and also, it's just it's just a ton of fun. And um, I've been using it since they had their major update to the current style it has. And even back then, when it was still its old weird style. But it was, How does it? One one final question. How does it interact with the watch? Um, I personally haven't used it on the watch too much, but um, just because I haven't really been used to my watch 
all recently. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's got watch complications. Um, I've got just uh like my little weather one on mine replaced with the carrot one, and it's pretty similar to what you'd expect from like uh the Apple one, uh the Apple weather one. Um, and yeah, it's got great watch support. Um, I have to check on that. See where that's at now. I haven't. Yeah, really I'm gonna have a look at this because this is this is definitely something. All right. Excellent iPad app too, by the way. Um, oh, good. Good. Like I said, I use it. I have an iPad. I just keep in my living room, and I use the um, the radar widget just there on the home screen, so I can just kind of always peek over there and just see it. It updates like every three minutes or so, I think. I'm glad we did two picks of the week this week. Then we got something for everybody with this one. Then. <laughs> So that's good. So yes, weather nerds, you get something too. Uh, what have we been up to, Tannis? What have you been doing this week? Um, doing doing fletching. Um, at the accidental fire making and fletching, <laughs> the old ranch. Um, I got started doing that. Was it before Christmas? And then yeah, I've kind of just kept doing it. So going for one twenty or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to gather uh, supplies, and then we'll bust that out on a uh, double on XP. a double XP. Yeah. yeah, right. Okay. Um, those are my dailies too. Uh, how about you, Earth? Mm-hmm. Not much since Christmas. Um, slowly working towards Master Quest Cape. I think I have 32 achievements left. Um. I was wondering if that was going to be your next one. Yeah, exactly 32, but it's all like I got to get dungeoneering. Um I think it's 117 dungeoneering you need. Yeah, I got to Well, the, well you can bet the hole will be coming back at some point this year. I still think if you get 120 Dungeoneering and you have more XP from the hole than you do from Dungeoneering, your cape should have the hole on the back of it instead of the ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fair enough, but, you know, we're not going to... Th- I think it's far too late in the podcast when to start a debate. When is the next double XP? Uh, late February, probably. Okay, well, expect... Bane does not deserve a Dungeoneering me. cape, guys. No, no, we don't. we don't like Dungeoneering. So uh, do you not have 120? No, I've, I've, I got 120. I got 120 through a combination of lamps, the hole, and um, token farming. He's got 120 wow. from, from being in the hole. Yeah. Yeah. Shane likes being in the hole. I did like <laughs> I did like 106 to 118 in the hole, and then the rest, I think, was from token farming and whatnot. So. Like oh, and day, there wasn't any holes. There's also the dungeon area. find a hole nowhere. There's also the dungeon area. Why do you sound like Santa? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little early a little for that. Late. <laughs> a little, uh, a little late. <laughs> yeah, a little late. Um, but there's also the wonderful uh, skill dummies as well that use that. So, um, how about you, uh, Zant? Um, I haven't been playing RS much, and honestly, I'm gonna be real with you. Uh. I was kind of like intending to not renew my premiere just because I am not playing right now, but I kind of had a bunch of membership built up from like the random prime things. So I kind of just have membership until April. now. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll play again and then buy premiere and then not play for a whole year. Yeah, um, and, and, and you know, that's a thing that people aren't aware of in this day and age is that premiere club is always available. It's not just a, and yeah, weird thing. there's just a little sale that happens at the uh, at the start of the year. So, but all right. But um, I did a couple weeks ago finish up my. I don't know. It's like more than a month at this point. I did finished up my 120 divination, and then I got lucky and got a gold present during the Christmas event, and so I got the nice purple Santa hat and made a nice little outfit. Nice, with it. nice. I, I I knew that 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 hat would be your color. I know it was like it's it's destiny, you know. They put a purple Santa hat in, and of course I get one. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, not not really much on RS. Just it um, sounds good, but but it's always good to talk about graphical stuff too on that. Yeah. So, um, I have been playing some Animal Crossing. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. 
Um, I I've been I've been I've been busy on RS. I've been oh, busy yeah. this week. I completed my second Imkando hatchet for the tool belt with the um with the bird's nest buff that was out a few days back. Nice. I, I did. I went nice. with that one over any of the combat ones because I just wanted a second one for the um, for the tool belt. So I got two pieces in about ninety minutes, and then the then the third one after the buff ended, um, or rather the fourth one after the buff ended, took about another uh, took about another three hours to get after that. So uh, th- that's what, kind of where I landed on the RNG for that one. But I have been doing a lot of PVM as well, as I mentioned. Um, since we last spoke, further refined tactics and whatnot at hard mode care pack to the point where I can uh, do that boss relatively easily now. And I have been spending a good time at Raziel as well, trying to complete that log. And I know people probably don't want to hear this, and you know, you, you, every, there's this whole conspiracy theory out there that I have this insane luck or this insane RNG or something. But That's I'm probably, true. but I'm probably. Um, 150 off from where I should be in terms of in terms of getting my next drop there, and I just passed the 700 uh, kill count mark at Raziel, and you know I I have a feeling that I'm still within the bounds of what's acceptable to complete the entire log, missing two items there, but you know knowing on knowing with luck how it's been, those next two items will be will be repeats of what I had. So I'm, I'm just, you know, whenever the opportunity arises, whenever the, the buff bonanza, uh, lines up for that in terms of being, you know, free prayer or free food or something to that effect, I've just been going there doing an hour, hour and a half of it and knocking out a bunch of kills. And, you know, uh, for some reason I decided completing the Raziel log was something I was going to do. So I've been, been working towards that one, but, um, I'm looking forward to more, uh, free deaths this weekend. Uh, with the buff bonanza continuing but that's pretty much the end of this episode uh just another reminder that if you do want to appear on update this year visit update.show slash help and we have a form there uh that you can fill out if you're interested in appearing on the podcast if you have something uh you want to talk about on the show tell us why you want to be on the show and of course uh tell us how to contact you and what time zone you're in because those are the two most important things update.show slash help but also before we go just a reminder that uh, we do this each and every week so the best way to get the podcast delivered automatically is to subscribe we're on all the podcast listeners out there apple pocket cast spotify and more just visit update.show slash subscribe and of course we're also on youtube at youtube.com slash rsbnb but um big thank you uh to use ad for being here always always good to hear your graphical insights because of course many people might not know but not on runescape but in in another place zant is an actual environment artist so it makes sense to for him to comment on that so thank you zant yeah it's always a pleasure to be here and of course uh earth thank you for joining us uh for your first appearance here in 2024 um always fun having you on the podcast and just you know getting your perspective of i guess runescape over the, over over the years let's just say you call me old oh mm-hmm. we're all old on that that's why i put that 20 plus year option on the survey this year on the on the survey yeah asshole yeah didn't have to do that oh i did i did i did i want to see who's going to put that but in any case uh tanis as well uh each and every week uh, we're here we're doing the podcast and we'll be back next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. Remember to fill out our survey at update.show slash survey. You could be one of the lucky people to win a bond if you fill that out. Uh, we'd greatly appreciate your input. But we'll see you guys next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. See you then, everyone. Take care. Bye Later. forever. Later. <laughs>